We love to show you how to operate MindRay CL1000i and CL1200i and do basic maintenance in this video. It includes the following contents. Powering on and off. Reagent and consumable management. Calibration. Quality control. Running samples and maintenance. First, let's see how to power on the machine. Turn on the analyzing unit power switch. Turn on the printer and the PC. Enter the operating software and log in. We do not recommend shutting down the machine since CL1000i and CL1200i can run cleaning process and system check automatically during the standby time when it is powered on, which can ensure the performance of the system. However, in case you have to power off the machine, please make sure that the system is in standby status. Select Exit on the left of the main screen and then select Shut Down. Shut off the power in the following order. Printer, Monitor and Analyzer Power Switch. Next, let's take a look at Reagent and Consumable Management. You can check the status of the reagent and consumables on the reagent overview page. MindRay CL1000i and CL1200i use five kinds of consumables. Substrate, CD80 wash solution, wash buffer, waste box, and cuvettes. The status is indicated by different colors and marks on the icon. You can refer to the detail in the operator's manual. If some of the reagents are exhausted or you need to add more reagents, please first check the status of the system. Only when it is on standby or incubation can you directly load reagents. In the running status, you have to click Reagent Stop first. You may have to wait some time to let the machine finish pipetting. A window will pop up to inform you that it is ready to load reagents. Take the reagent out from the box and check. For example, is the kit buckle broken? Is there any leakage on the kit? If so, stop using the kit. If the kit is not open yet, turn it upside down to mix the microparticles until you cannot see any sediment. If the kit is already open, mix the microparticle bottle by removing the gear on it. Remove the aluminum foil to open the reagent and check the silicone membranes if they are sealed. Use clean tips to break the seal to prevent probe collision. One tip for one vial to avoid contamination. The system supports both manual and auto reagent loading. In the manual mode, enter the barcode information manually or via barcode reader and load reagent according to the position you edited. In the auto mode, Load the reagent directly and the system will scan the reagent information with the barcode reader inside the machine. You can load the reagent according to the instruction label on the machine. Move the reagent carousel by pressing the indication light beside it. Hearing a click, it means loading is successful. Take the kit up vertically to ensure the loading. Two bottles of substrate can be loaded at the same time. When the substrate is in use, the corresponding yellow indication light will be on. When it is finished, the light will flash, which means you have to change the substrate. Take one bottle of substrate and check the package for any leakage or damage. Equilibrate in room temperature for more than six hours. There are two ways to load the substrate quick loading, and loading via consumable management screen. For quick loading, scan barcode on the substrate bottle. Remove the protective aluminum film from the bottom of the substrate bottle. Loosen the substrate bottle cap about a quarter of a circle. Load substrate to current available position. Make sure the metal block can secure the bottle. Loosen the cap for a circle, but do not remove it. Press the indication light corresponding to the loading position to confirm that loading is completed. To load via consumable management screen, 
click the available substrate channel, scan the barcode, and save the information. Load the substrate onto the analyzer the same way as quick loading. Please do not mix the two channels. To unload, tightly close the cap and take the bottle out. In order to protect the piercing needle, do not expose it in the air for a long time. One tank of wash buffer can be loaded on board. When it is finished, the software will inform you to load a new one. You can do this when the analyzer is running. Go to the Consumable Management screen. Open the Reagent Load screen of Wash Buffer. Remove the cap of the Wash Buffer tank. Loosen the cap assembly of the empty Wash Buffer tank and put it into the new tank. Do not contaminate the cap assembly. When installing the cap assembly, lift the tank mouth with one hand while tightening the cap with the other. Use a clean tissue to wipe the spilt wash buffer. Enter the volume information and click Load. Do not pool the dead volume of the wash buffer in case of contamination. CD80 wash solution is used to clean the probe. If the wash solution is used up, you can replenish the bottle when the system is not running in case of probe collision. Choose Wash Solution on the Consumable Management page and click Load. Take the Wash Solution bottle out and add CD80 Wash Solution offline with pipettes. Do not add when bottle is still on the machine. Enter the following information. Volume and expiration date. Put the wash solution bottle back to the position. Please make sure it will not block the probe movement. Click load and exit. This is the cuvette where the reaction takes place. Two trays of cuvettes can be loaded on the system. Cuvette inventory can be displayed by the software or the indication light. Open the package by the notch. Do not drop or contaminate the cuvettes. Open the door and pull out the tray rack. Take the empty tray out and load a new one. Hold the side of the tray to avoid contamination. Press the four corners to make sure the tray touches the bottom of the holder. Push the tray rack back in and close the door. The software can automatically refresh the number of remaining cuvettes. Be mindful of dust in case it influences the test results. If the cuvettes are on board for more than seven days, please do not use them. One waste bag can be loaded on the analyzer. Flashing of the indication light means it needs replacement. Shape the waste container to form a box and make sure its shape can be maintained. Pull or push the interior bag down to make enough space for cuvettes. Open the door, take the waste box out and discard it. Load a new waste box and press the indication light so that the software can refresh the remaining volume of the waste box. If you accidentally press the indication light, please empty the waste box and load it again. Moving on, we are going to learn how to run calibration. You can go to the Reagent Calibration page to check which chemistry needs calibration. If you run a calibration, you can perform in the following order. Define a calibrator. Input calibration master curve information. Set up calibrator position. Request calibration. Load calibrators and run. Check calibration status. First, let's define a calibrator. Open the Read Calibrator Information Card dialog. Scan the 2D barcode on the calibrator box and click Save. If you would like to define more calibrators, scan more barcodes on the calibrator box. Next step is to import Master Curve information. Open the Master Curve Information dialog. Scan the 2D barcode on the reagent box and click Save. To define more master curves, 
scan more barcodes on the reagent box. After finishing this, we have to set up the calibrator position. Select Cal Position and choose the calibrator you need to edit. Choose a rack number or lane number and the position for every level of the calibrators. Next, we have to request calibration. Go to Reagent Calibration page. Select the chemistry that needs calibration. Select Cal. The Cal status will turn to Requested. Click Load List. The calibrator list shows all requested chemistries as well as calibrator's information. Load calibrators according to the calibrator list. Click Start button to run. If the calibration is successful, the status will change to Calibrated. If not, it is Cal failed. You can refer to the operator's manual for the failure flag information and ways to rectify. To perform QC, you can follow the following order. Define a control. Select chemistries. Set up control concentration. Assign control position. Set up QC rules. Run QC. Check QC results. If you use MindRay internal control, you can define the control by simply importing the QC information. Go to QC setup and click import control. Scan the barcode on the control box and save. To define more controls, scan more barcodes on the control box. For MindRay internal control, all the chemistries included in the control with their means and SDs will be automatically imported when scanning the barcode. If you use a third-party control, you can also manually define it. Go to QC Setup and click Define. Enter the required information on the window. After defining a control, you need to select chemistries for which the control will be used. After selecting the chemistries, we have to set up the control concentration and SD. Just like calibration, we have to assign the control position. Go to Control Position page. Select Rack ID or Lane Number and the position for the control. The software allows you to set up QC rules. Open the QC Rules Setup page and tick the rules according to your needs. Now we can run controls. Click Program and Quality Control. Select the control and chemistries you are going to run. Input the position if necessary. Choose the sample cup type used. Load control according to the position you set. Click Start button to run. When QC is finished, you can check the LJ chart. You can also check more detailed QC results on Current Results, History Results, or QC Results page. After calibration and QC, we can run samples. You can run both routine samples and stat samples. For routine samples, select Program and Samples. Enter the sample ID. Sample ID is composed of numbers or letters and numbers. Up to 10 digits can be entered. Input the rack ID and position number based on the analysis mode. Choose the chemistries desired. Only those in black can be requested for analysis. Select Options to edit sample cup type, replication, and dilution. Edit patient information such as age and gender in demographics window. Click Save so that you can define the next sample. Click List and load samples according to the position information on the list. Click Start button to run. For stat samples, just mark the stat checkbox before selecting chemistries. The other editing procedures are the same as running routine samples. Or you can click the ambulance button to edit stat samples. Input sample ID and other sample information, choose the chemistries and save. Load samples and place the rack in stat lane. Click Start button to run. 
You can view the results in current or history. The current includes those that are programmed and analyzed on the day. The history results are those programmed and analyzed before or on the day. Two kinds of simple maintenance will be introduced in this video. Probe exterior cleaning and dispersion aspirate probes cleaning. It is recommended to clean the probe exterior every day. Go to Maintenance and click Maintenance Command. Choose Clean Probe Exterior and click Continue. Move the probe arm to a position convenient for cleaning. Use alcohol swab to gently wipe the probe. Use swab moistened with deionized water to clear the ethanol on the probe. Do not pull the probe horizontally to prevent probe damage. Select Done to reset probe position. It is recommended to clean the dispersion aspirate probes after 2,500 infectious disease tests or 5,000 routine tests. Select Clean Dispersion Probes, Tubes in Maintenance Command page. Click Continue so that the dispersion disk can move down for more space to take the probes out. The four dispersion aspirate probes are marked A1, A2, A3 and A4 respectively. Take A4 as an example. Loosen the quick joint at the end of the tube. Unscrew the round screw of A4 aspirate probe and lift the aspirate probe gently to remove it from the dispersion carousel. Do not crook or scratch the probe. Use alcohol swab to clean the exterior of the replaced aspirate probe and use the unclogging device to clean its interior. Connect the syringe tool in the accessory kit with a quick joint of the aspirate probe. Prepare a beaker full of CD80 wash solution, emerge the other end of the probe into the beaker, and push and pull the syringe plunger for over 10 times. Discharge the liquid in the tube and lift the probe tip above the liquid level. Emerge the probe tip into another beaker filled with deionized water or distilled water. Pull the syringe plunger to aspirate liquid. Put the probe into another empty beaker and push the syringe plunger to discharge the liquid. Repeat this action for at least 10 times to clean the probe interior. Disconnect the probe assembly from the syringe connector. Remove the leftover liquid and use clean tissue to dry the probe exterior. Clean the other three tubes the same way. Install back the probe on the plate and tighten the round screw clockwise. Lift the aspirate probe gently and check if it can spring back smoothly. Please take care not to crook or scratch the probe. Connect the quick joint on the machine. 